let's assess. Let's, let's run an assessment. We'll get a report. We have a very colorful graph we can look at that's going to show you exactly where, where your EQ strengths are and where your highs and lows are, right? And we're going to get a chance to look at these 15 skills in five composite areas. Okay. And then, and then we're going to dig in, right? We're going to start exploring what, what's up with these, what's up with the highs, what's up with the lows, what's up, what's up with like, one of the things we measure is optimism, Ooh, your optimism is off the charts, super high. You are optimistic and positive in every situation. What is that costing you? What risk is there associated with an optimism that is like beyond the high end of the scale? Are you potentially... What I hear, what I tend to hear. I'm I'm trying to answer. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's tough. You know, I, I have really high optimism. My guess would be that you do too. Uh, Yeah. But I would say, but when you ask that, I would say, I would answer it in the sense. It fails me at. setting the right boundary in this and not necessarily a boundary in a situation, but being able to set my intention into a situation. It, it, because I think there are times that I'm like, well, everybody's like that, right? Let's just move forward and everything. And then something pops off that I'm like, I'm thrown back a little bit from that yes. optimism. I and mean, I, I won't know how to react yeah. because then past kicks in because I was developed from rejection and abandonment. That's where my development started. So overcoming that to then say, okay, I'm not being hurt here, Mm -hmm. you know, and understanding where my, the, the response is in that. So I, I, that's how I think I would answer that. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, one of the, one of the most common responses that I hear when we're talking about optimism in that way is, yeah, I sometimes ignore the possibility that this couldn't go well, because I just think everything's going to go well all the time. And And then I'm sometimes really taken by surprise when things actually don't go well. Yeah. I'm just brokenhearted. I'm just like, oh my God, it didn't work. And I'm like, well, did right. I go into this with the right emotional? Tone? Right, right. Now imagine, now imagine a person with that level of optimism, that relentless optimism, who doesn't see the stuff that's around the corner because they're not willing to look. Imagine that person leading an entire organization. Right. Yeah. That's, there's a risk there. There's a huge risk. So we start looking at the, we start looking at the highs and lows, and then we start looking at the balance, right? Where, how do these different skills interact with one another? What is it, what is it doing for you? If, for example, you have um, really high assertiveness, you are, you are an assertive person. You're willing to put yourself out there and say what you believe even if it costs you something or it's uncomfortable to do that, what happens if you've got really high, imp- uh, really high assertiveness and really low impulse control? Well, now you're just out there saying what you think all the time with no filter, probably offending a lot of people, probably pissing a lot of people off in your meetings because you just jump in without stopping to think about, am I contributing something that is of value to the conversation here? Right. So it's not just a high is great. A low is not great. It's like, how, how are these things interacting with one another? And so, so to your question about like, do we want to oversimplify it? I think like if, if you, if you are a person who is like, all right, I'm ready to dig in and work on my emotional intelligence. Um, and what you're, what you have to be prepared for is like, you're really, 
engaging in a process that's like, maybe it starts today, but you're not going to finish it today. 